Well, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the uh, Intern Orientation Boot Camp. We're going to speak a little right now about the right upper quadrant ultrasound or the biliary ultrasound and just give you a brief introduction on, on how to find it and, and, and some pathologic structure. So we'll, we'll first discuss the anatomy um, as well as the, the, the technique to be able to most effectively locate the gallbladder. Um, and then we'll look at some abnormal pathologies and discuss a few cases. So as far as right upper quadrant an, an anatomy, there's some significant variation in the position, uh, the shape, and the size of the gallbladder. Um, and it can be different and difficult to find on, on different patients. So this can, can be very frustrating. So let's talk a little about the anatomy that we're going to be trying to find um, and focus on it here. First, we have the fundus and the body and the neck of the gallbladder uh, on the left of the screen. That then connects to the cystic duct um, and as we see there, that then connects to the common hepatic duct. That common hepatic duct is coming from the liver, and the common hepatic duct and the cystic duct then join uh, to form the common bile duct. And as we recall, the common bile duct, uh, that's going to course just anterior to the portal vein within the portal triad as it, um, prior to entering the duodenum. So that's what we're going to look at to try and find the common bile duct. We'll talk a little about the technique to find uh, to find these structures most effectively. Um, I think I think my favorite and I think the easiest approach most of the time is this uh, subcostal approach, uh, where we 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 choose a, a low frequency probe and we place the probe just under the costal margin, just under the rib spaces, where uh, anatomically we think uh, the inferior margin of that uh, liver is going to be that we can find the gallbladder. Uh, the probe orientation, uh, as with all ultrasound uh, in the emergency department, apart from cardiac ultrasound, we always keep the marker dot towards the patient's right or towards the patient's head. And then we're just going to slowly kind of sweep and fan and pretty much, you know, direct that ultrasound beam anywhere we all around that area trying to find uh, the gallbladder. Um, as we do that, we're going to be scanning through the grainy kind of gray tissue that we see here, uh, which is the liver. And uh, as we do that, we're going to be looking for a cystic or circular or oval type structure that we see here in, in this black hypoechoic area, which is the gallbladder on the, uh, on the upper right of the screen. In this image, we also see the portal vein, which, is, which courses through the liver. Um, and you, can, and you can note that that portal vein does have pretty hyperechoic walls, which is one of the clues that will help you uh, in identifying it. So like we said, with, the, with all the anatomic variation, um, here are some tips to keep in mind uh, if, we're having, if you're having some trouble uh, locating the gallbladder. Number one, you can ask the patient to take a deep breath in and hold it. This will increase the size of the thoracic cavity and kind of push down on the liver and the gallbladder and may make it easier to get the gallbladder in view under that costal margin. Um, additionally, uh, we can place the patient in the left lateral decubitus position or just lean them on their left side and sometimes that may position the gallbladder or closer to the surface or at least in an area that we may be able to see it better at. And then, and then if all else fails, there's a couple other approaches that we can talk about that uh, can be helpful in, in, in locating the gallbladder. So this is one of those approaches. Uh, this is the intercostal approach. And in this, with this approach, you want to find the xiphoid process. And you just want to scan pretty much through the, the right between the rib spaces, scan approximately seven centimeters to the patient's right, just to the right of the xiphoid process. And hopefully you can see between those, um, those rib spaces to get a good image of the gallbladder if you're unable to see it from the sub-xiphoid approach. The, another alternate approach is the lateral mid-axillary approach. So this is, and this is basically the, the FAST or your Morrison's pouch uh, approach that you're looking at on the FAST exam. Um, and this can be successful in patients who have a, a gallbladder uh, located laterally. And you're basically going to start on, start on the, the lateral aspect of the, of the rib cage and kind of uh, slide up until you can see that uh, liver come into view and then fan through it to see if you're able to locate the, locate the gallbladder. Now, once you find it, the most important thing, I think, just stop. Just don't move. Um, you want to make, once you have it in view, it can be, as, as we say, it can be hard to find. You don't want to lose it. So just make small micro adjustments uh, to get the long axis in view. 
Um, and and once you have once you're able to visualize the whole long axis, you can then rotate it without moving without moving the angle of the probe. You can then just rotate it 90 degrees and look at it in a cross sectional or a short axis view. Um, and then in both of those views, in the in the long axis or the short axis views, you should fan and uh, through the entire image to make sure you're not missing any abnormal pathology. So here we have an image of the a normal image of the longitudinal view of the gallbladder. You can see the kind of long hypoechoic uh, structure on the screen in the top right there. That's the gallbladder with the fundus on the top um, and the liver on the left side. We'll look at a couple more images here. Here's another uh, normal longitudinal axis of the, of the gallbladder. And remember, just as you see on this screen, you should fan through the entire organ just for complete visualization to make sure nothing you're not missing any structure or, or any abnormal pathology. Here we have a normal transverse image of the same gallbladder. It looks more circular or sometimes more triangular. Um, and again, just as, as, as we said on this, on this screen, you should then fan through the entire, uh, entire structure from one end to the other uh, until it disappears so that you don't miss any of the abnormal pathology that could be lying in there. Here on the left, we have a normal gallbladder, uh, which appears larger due to the patient's fasting state. So when you, when you ha haven't eaten for a while, that gall gallbladder does enlarge. And sometimes it makes it easier to find it because you have a larger dark or hyperechoic area to find. Um, on the right, we have the, oh, I'm sorry. On the right, we have this postprandial uh, kind of contracted state of the gallbladder. Um, and you notice that the gallbladder wall is slightly thickened. So um, sometimes you know, that, that's a normal finding, and sometimes the gallbladder thickness depends on the amount of gallbladder distension. So let's go ahead and look for some of, these, some of this abnormal pathology that we're talking about. First, we're going to look for gallstones. Uh, we're going to look for wall thickening. And then lastly, pericholecystic fluid. So let's first talk about stones. Uh, due to their, their mineral makeup, stones are uh, hyperechoic, or they appear very bright on the screen. Um, and again, also because of their mineral makeup, uh, ultrasound beam does not penetrate through them. And so this leaves a shadow behind them that we call the acoustic shadow. And lastly, because they are uh, free stones inside the gallbladder, they should, they should be dependent uh, and, and gravity should pull them to the most dependent portion of the gallbladder. Uh, so they should appear on the bottom of the screen if the patient is lying flat. Here we have an image, uh, a gallstone here, uh, which is hyperechoic, and as you see, it's on kind of the bottom aspect of the gallbladder. And just below that, you can see the acoustic shadow that's caused by uh, the lack of uh, a sound waves that's penetrating through the gallstone. Here we have another gallstone. You can see the acoustic shadow as well. This is in, in the transverse view, so that's why you see the circular gallbladder that looks a lot smaller, but you definitely see that stone in there as well. And then how about this one? Uh, you see this. You see a hyperechoic structure, but it to me it does not look dependent. It almost looks fixed to the wall. Additionally, I don't see any shadowing. So this is actually a gallbladder polyp. So not a specifically concerning uh, abnormal pathology. Something that we see uh, not not infrequently in gallbladders as well. So not a stone. This is a gallbladder polyp. Let's talk a little bit about the abnormal about the gallbladder wall. So, so the wall thickness of the gallbladder, sh the normal should be up to about three millimeters. Um, and as, as we discussed, this can be this can be uh, it, it, they can be thicker in some other states. Of course, we're, we're looking for acute cholecystitis, which is an abnormal an abnormal state. But even in in CHF, in low protein states, and kind of like we said before, in very uh, contracted states, they can be um, slightly enlarged and and not be abnormal. It's also important to remember that we need to measure the wall anteriorly, or if you look on the screen, the anterior portion of the wall is where the arrows are, uh, which are between the, the liver inner space and uh, the liver and the gallbladder. Um, the, because of the decreased attenuation through the, the fluid-filled structure of the gallbladder, you can get um, the posterior acoustic enhancement of that uh, posterior wall of the gallbladder, and that can make it look a lot uh, bigger or brighter uh, than it actually is. So we always measure the gallbladder on the anterior side or the, or the side between the gallbladder and the liver.
And remember, a thick wall is not always cholecystitis. Okay, so here we see um, some kind of hyperemia and some fluid around in uh, around the wall of the gallbladder. This is called pericholecystic fluid, um, and this is definitely a concerning finding for an inflamed or infected state, uh, and specifically concerning for cholecystitis. You can kind of see it right there. Lastly, we'll talk about the sonographic Murphy sign. We all know the, the physical exam Murphy sign when we uh, compress the right upper quadrant and the lack of uh, patient inspiration or severe pain uh, is, is a Murphy sign. Well, this is the sonographic Murphy sign where we place the probe directly over the gallbladder fundus. fundus and basically you, you find uh, the, the, the spot where the, the gallbladder is closest to the surface and you just compress right there. Um, you're looking for pain, uh, and specifically pain during inspiration or the inability to inspire due to the pain, uh, which we would call a, a positive Murphy sign. Last but not least, we got to at least look for the por portal triad briefly. Uh, we'll take a quick look here. You may or may not find it, uh, as it can sometimes be hard to find. And of course, in you know a small, we're looking for the common bile duct when we look at that portal triad. And if it, if the common bile duct is really small, it can be hard to find. But again, the smaller it is, uh, the less likely it's to have abnormal pathology. So. Um, to find the common bile duct, it's often easier to first locate the portal vein. Uh, so here we see the gallbladder, which is, which is the hypoechoic sac-like structure and the right, up, right aspect of the screen. And then we have a slightly hyperechoic line, which is the MLF or the median lobar fissure uh, that connects the neck of the gallbladder to the portal triad. Um, the portal vein walls are typically hyperechoic, as we see here, and so sometimes finding the portal vein might be easier, uh, and then we just look anterior to that portal vein and, and may be able to see the portal, uh, the common bile duct uh, running just, uh, just anterior to it. All right. We kind of just discussed this, but um, the common bile duct just uh, lies just anterior to that, uh, to the portal vein. And then we want to measure the inside diameter. So a normal common bile duct diameter is going to be less than about four to five millimeters. And of course this, as we age, we give ourselves a little bit of leeway with, uh, with that measurement. Here's a picture of the common bile duct. If you look just below that, you see the portal vein uh, and then the IVC below that. And, and notice that the portal vein, kind of like I was saying before, has a very um, hyperechoic wall, uh, as does the common bile duct. But the, those, the, that should clue you into the fact that that's not the IVC and those are structures within the, within the, within the liver. Here we have the visualization of the common bile duct that looks dilated. And, I, and one reason I kept this in here is that um, Often when the common bile duct is dilated, it may just look like the portal vein because it's so big. So using color Doppler may, may help clarify which structure is, is vascular. And of course, the common bile duct should, ha should have no vascular flow. So here we see the flow in the portal vein just below the common bile duct and no flow in that, in that, in that dilated common bile duct above it. Real quick, let's just run through a couple of cases here. Uh, here we have an image of a gallbladder. We obviously see a, a large stone with shadowing. However, I don't see an enlarged, uh, thickened gallbladder wall. I don't see any pericholecystic fluid. So no secondary signs of inflammation or infection other than that, that large gallstone that we see. So I would say not cholecystitis here. All right, how about this one? If we look at this structure, we see some increased uh, echogenicity, or we, we could say lithogenic bile that's seen in the gallbladder. This is actually biliary sludge. So this is typically dependent and kind of layers, often layers in the, in the most dependent portion of the, uh, of the gallbladder. I don't see a thickened wall here. Um, and I don't think I see any pericholecystic fluid. And then how about here? We see a stone. We clearly that's a stone because of the, the, the shadowing that we see below the stone. Outside the wall, we do have what looks to be a thickened wall and likely some pericholecystic fluid. So this, I would definitely call cholecystitis. Here's another image. 
Again, you have a you have a stone that has that has that a shadowing below the stone. You have a thickened wall, and I could convince myself there's a little bit of pericholecystic fluid here, some mild pericholecystic fluid here. So again, I would call this cholecystitis as well. All right, and then this is kind of a cool image. If you look at that, you know, again, as we spoke, we're looking at the portal vein here, and we're looking in color flow to see the vascular flow over that venous structure below. Now we have a similar-looking tubular structure above it that is dilated. It has a, it has a hyperechoic wall, so it looks like it could be the common bile duct. But look at, look at the inside of that common bile duct. There is a large stone uh, inside that common bile duct. So... Uh, CBD dilation, dil dilatation as well as a stone. So at, at minimum, a cholidocolithiasis, um, and we would have to look at the actual gallbladder to, to make any further references as to whether there was a cholecystitis as well. So that is the end. Um, just remember a couple of things. Um, all shadows might not be stones. You can get other things shadowing like, um, you know, the edge, the edge artifact on the walls. Um, gallbladders... Plus, uh, gallbladder plus stones does not always equal cholecystitis. You have to have some of those other pathologic findings that we discussed. And then if you're unable to find the common bile duct, uh, like I say, if it's really small, uh, it's more likely that that's normal. They've actually done some studies that have shown that uh, in absence of any other abnormal pathologic findings, if you're unable to find the common bile duct, uh, it's very unlikely that you have any sort of uh, abnormal pathology. So again, um, good luck this week. Keep practicing. The gallbladder is a, can, can be a frustrating uh, exam to do, but uh, the more you practice, the more you'll be able to uh, find the gallbladder and be more successful. So I look forward to working with you. Thanks.